morning in our prayer of invocation. We have entered your chapel, O God, where there are memories of saints, messages of peace, imperatives of prophets, where death is overcome by resurrection and the name of living turned into redemption, where sin is embraced by grace, arrogance overcome by humility, and despair replaced with hope. We are here, and you are waiting for us to receive these gifts. Make it possible during our time together to move closer to you and your will. Amen. Easter vacation. 
spring vacation. Ooh, pardon me. I'm not supposed to say Easter anymore in school. You get your vacation for a few days. Great things going on in the family. And you know, we learn from all kinds of things. I want you to think about this. Any of you have a teacher? Who has a teacher? Everybody's got a teacher. Who do you think taught Jesus when he was young? A teacher. A teacher, exactly. And that's a great thing about teachers is they've been around for centuries. When Jesus was learning about his faith, just like you learned about your faith, when you talk here on Sundays and you go to Sunday school and <coughs> wonderful folks that teach you that are here, Jesus had the same thing happening in his life. He had the same things to learn and understand about his faith, the traditions of his family. So if you think about it, you're just in that same line one with Jesus, learning about your faith, learning about your families, learning about the history, all those fun things. Along with the fun things, a big thing's happening. There's a big thing that's going to happen in just a few weeks. Anybody have an idea what's going to happen in a few weeks? Easter, yes. A great thing for everybody. And what happens on Easter? Does anybody have any clue? Resurrection. Resurrection happens exactly when Jesus goes and takes care of us forever and ever and ever on that morning. He died for each and every one of us, guaranteeing our futures. How much better does it get than that? And not only is he there guaranteeing our future, but he's there every day to talk to. You know, you talk to him every morning. Jesus, good morning. That easy? There's no prayer. Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day. My goodness, it's sunny outside. I have this big concert to go to, and there's not 12 inches of snow and a blizzard <coughs> happening. Oh, my goodness, we've had that stuff go on before. I've got my new car, and I can actually drive down the road because there's no ice and snow. I got days off, I can go outside and play and have a good time riding my bike and doing those things. So, so many things we can do and so many things that Jesus did for us all throughout, plus the teaching. He not only taught us what he had to say, but he showed, he understood and learned from his teachers. So, if you have your teachers talking and telling you different things and working with you on what's going on in the faith, why do we need to know these things? What are those ten suggestions? Anybody know one of the ten suggestions? Give me one. Do not steal. Do not steal. No other gods. No other gods. You're going to go with hers, right? Perfect. Yes, those ten commandments. He learned all that too. <coughs> all those things he learned just like you're learning. Your teachers give you that knowledge. And you can impart that knowledge if you go forward too. Just like Jesus did for each and every one of us. So I always keep him in mind saying, Jesus, did this got to do this too? He probably had that homework also. <laughs> Jesus, get home and do your homework. He was probably doing it also. So we're doing all the same things, plus we get to visit with him and talk to him and have all that great times because of him with our friends and our family. So as we move forward during Lent and you think more and more about Jesus, think about all the things that Jesus did too in his life. He went to school. He learned. He might have even had detention. If he was in there fooling around, turning water into wine or something early and trying to do it, he might have had detention for that. So he's just as human as we are. He also came here for each and every one of us. And we'll get to celebrate that in just a couple of weeks. On Easter Sunday, you guys already know about it. My God, your teachers are great. You know about all these things. Let's take a time of prayer. <coughs> make sure you say it pretty loud because there's some folks in the back that want to hear it too. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you, we thank you for, sending Jesus for sending Jesus into our world. Into our world. And we also thank you, and we also thank you for our teachers, for our teachers and all of those, and all of those who help us understand our faith. Who help us understand our faith. And we promise, and we promise to share that faith. To share that faith. All throughout our lives. All throughout our lives. Amen. Amen. All right, so you three are good sports today. Right there. Yeah. We're going to take care of it. Even though I didn't get any dumb, dumb questions today that I couldn't answer, you guys get a prize anyway. Yeah. All right, thank you guys for coming up.
spend our time with learning, that we also learn about giving and being a part of that family, being a part of what Jesus started. And thinking about that family and that giving, that I invite the ushers to come forward this morning for our offering.
reading is from the book of Psalm, Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Now I'll invite all three of you to please stand for our second reading this morning. Our second reading today is from the prophet Isaiah. We're going to be in the 55th chapter beginning with the first verse. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without wine. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. To you. Talking about teachers. There's a kindergarten teacher who gave her class a show and tell assignment of bringing something to represent their religion. The first boy got in front of the class and said, My name is Benjamin, and I'm Jewish, and this is the Star of David. The second boy got in front of the class and said, My name is Marty, I'm Catholic, and this is a crucifix. The third boy got in front of the class and said, My name is Tommy. And I have UCC, and this is a capsule. <laughs> Not hungry, are you? <laughs> this morning we're going to begin with the message about being thirsty, talking about foods and different things. We're going to be thirsty for the things of God and hungry for God to do something in our lives. Many people say they want God in life, and many people say that they're hungry for God to make a change in their lives, in their way of life. But sometimes what people want and what they're willing to do to see it happen can sometimes be two very different things. Today we're looking back at the words of the prophet Isaiah, written over 2,500 years ago, recording the words that God had given them to speak to a rebellious nation of Israel. It wasn't going real good for them. They refused to obey God and were at that time, suffering the consequences of not following their faith. It was not a good time for them. God had allowed the Assyrian army to come and take them captive the Babylon. So a lot of things going on in the world for them. They were dragged from their homes, forced to be slaves in the country. 
that paraded their gods that supposedly had defeated Israel's own God, our God. They were strangers in that land. They were depressed because they thought God had abandoned them at that time. And if you think about it, why is it that people walk away from God and do their own thing without inviting him in? Without saying, God, get in here, please. Need a little help from you. And then they blame God for what's going on. Don't invite him in. Don't have anything to do with him. But then he's the, the one they blame. People back in that day accused him of abandonment. They chose to walk in the wilderness on their own. And then they blame God for the wilderness experience. Not inviting God in. They put themselves into a black hole by walking away from God, not keeping him close, not having him in their lives. Yet they blame them for where they're at. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. You, you made that happen. Didn't invite you in, but you're the one. Sounds a lot like some people today. A lot of things to complain about. Them. They're not <clears throat> doing the thing that maybe they should. It goes on around us all the time. They have no time for God except to criticize it. Criticize, where is God? Where is he at? Did you ask him to come? Did you invite him in? Do you want him to be a part of what's going on? Help you out a little bit? All those different things. God gives an invitation to the thirsty this morning. And by thirsty, we mean people that want God to refresh them, to revive them, and give them what they need, giving us what we need. When we're in the middle of something, when we're moving through something, and something happens, in our world. It says, come, all who are thirsty. Come to him. Very simple words. Those who are satisfied with what this world offers, sometimes they see no need for Christ. They have got everything I need. And things are great. They don't have that thirst. They don't seem to have that need. They have no desire to receive or act on his invitation to come. <coughs> and to those who are thirsty, those who want God closer in that relationship. The Bible tells that Jesus Christ is water. It's refreshing water. Satisfying. A fountain that brings healing. Notice also, notice the living water. The psalmist tells us, as a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. I want to be closer to God. Just like that wonderful, cool, refreshing water. Great way to think about that. People tend to be one of them, unsatisfied, depressed, and not wanting God. I don't know part of that stuff. Another one is longing for God. Wanting Him to satisfy their thirst. And rely on God to satisfy their thirst. God be with me. Help me out. Give me a little bit of direction. Some insight. Some how to think about all these things. And if we think about it, we know where we're at on the scale, but think about where we could be on that scale. It can't be both. Can't say, no, God, I don't need any part of you, but no, Lord, I need you. It doesn't work out that way. You're either in or you're out. One or the other. One person can be mad at God because they feel abandoned. God's not here with me. Not acknowledging that they kind of pushed him on the picture. I don't want anything to do with God or their faith. Or one realizing that they need more. They want more. They're unsatisfied, and they're desiring God to be a bigger part of their life. And Lord, I want you in here. I want you with me. I want your Holy Spirit to help me out and do all these different things and be able to see through things and get through things, have that strength when we need it. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have not money, have no money, come, buy and eat. See what just happened in that little sentence right there? The invitation included everybody, not just those with or without. It's everybody. Nobody is excluded when it comes to going to God. His involvement in your life, Him being there for you. Those who have no money are still invited to receive. It's there for you, no cost. And those who have no money have no excuse because it's being offered, it's being given to them. It does not matter what you may or may not have. Christ will not disappoint us. He will meet our expectations if we let him in, if we go to him, if we allow that to come to us. Accept that gift that satisfies During this Lenten season, we're moving closer 
And when Jesus did the ultimate thing for us, like we talked with our young folks this morning, the ultimate sacrifice ensuring our futures. Only Christ satisfies our thirst, our true thirst, of understanding, knowing, loving God. Even our youth this morning knew all about what's happening, what's coming up, what's going on. Even with exciting things happening in their world, they still see that faith is a great part of it and what's happening. Because Jesus does indeed quench our thirsts. We have a God who offers us an invitation to those who've had enough of doing it their own way. Because it's not working. We have an invitation. An invitation to those who have tried to fill the void in their lives and now know that only God can really fill it. God can be there and help make all those things happen. Question we can ask ourselves, we're moving through today and going down the line toward Easter. Are you satisfied with your relationship with God? Are you satisfied with where you're at? If you are, then we're a great place for moving forward and having that. And we're not forced to do anything. We have that relationship that started. But if we're not satisfied, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to get closer? Being closer to God. He tells us that if you're thirsty, come for him. Come to him. That he, God, will satisfy thirst by intervening in our lives. Being there with us. Being beside us. Giving us that strength. Giving us those abilities. Because God wants us to be satisfied. He wants us to enjoy this place we live. He wants us to enjoy the people around us, the things happening. Even the stuff we have. He wants us to enjoy all of these things. But he also wants us to have that satisfaction in him. Not only in our comforts and man-made pleasures that we have, those things are great too, but he wants us to come to him and have him involved in our lives and be with us. When we think about that satisfaction, something satisfies you, when you think of a Snickers bar, because Snickers bar supposedly satisfies, darn good when you have one, let me tell you, it does satisfy, but that's not everything. Some of those slogans that we hear, Satisfaction guaranteed. We promise you like it or your money back. Customer satisfaction. If you're not happy, we'll make it right. We must understand kind of what this satisfaction is to appreciate that satisfaction. To have that thirst, to have that hunger, to want that closer relationship with God. And unless we feel that little bit of dissatisfaction where we're at, we never really move forward. <coughs> We can say we're sick and tired of being sick and tired, but what are we doing about it? Are we getting that close relationship? Maybe opening that book at home, blow the dust off, says Holy Bible on top somewhere, crack that binding a little bit and say, what does this thing really have to say in here? Kind of fun, I know some of you do it, you just hold it to a page anywhere and just read something on there and see what is being said to you that day. What's the Lord have to say? It's right there every day and we can do that just that easy by getting rid of that little bit of dust and getting that binding loosened up a little bit. We can do all of those things because God does indeed want us to be satisfied. He wants us satisfied and there, with Him. Thinking about Him, being with Him. We must know the emptiness, being thirsty, to like the fullness of being satisfied. Say, so, if you want you near me, and if I do these things, I'll feel that presence, I'll know He's there. Just like we feel when he is next to us. Because he walks with us. And he talks with us. And he's there with us. He's in the garden with us. He's everywhere with us. He's here right now in this place. He can put that candle down a little bit so we don't burn the place down. So all these things are happening right here with each and every one of us. King Solomon, one of the people in the Bible, who had it all. He had everything he could ever want. Riches, power, everything. Summed it up that without God, life is meaningless. He had everything. Without God, life is meaningless. God telling us to come to Him is an action word, an action verb. Come to me. Come to me, He knows for you are thirsty. And we must move toward God. We must head toward Him. Our body thirsts. We drink water to quench that thirst. When we're spiritually thirsty, we need to come to God and He will satisfy our soul. He'll be there for us. We can be together here. We're here on Wednesday nights. So those who haven't come, a lot of fun. Great presentations. He's been working hard on all those things and praying to the knockout this past week, so 
Love to have you there. But God wants us there to come to Him and learn a little bit more. Maybe understand. Because human effort always falls a little short by itself. Never really is perfect all the way through. And in this Lenten season that we're in the middle of right now, what are you reaching for to quench that thirst? What are you looking for? What are you doing to draw closer to the Lord? Things we can think about. Things we can work on. We can come back to the words that the prophets tell us. Why spend money and labor on what doesn't satisfy? But the Lord satisfies us. But the Lord satisfies us and will be there for us. Give ear and come to me that you may have life. And in all of this, Isaiah spoke of a new beginning. He's telling not only us of a new beginning today in our reading, but the people back in the day of that new beginning. That our God is a God of second chances. A God that's there for us no matter what's going on. A God that we can go back to. He brings us hope for today. And that hope is in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus offers us that fresh start. We can come back to him. He offers us satisfaction of knowing that God is with us, that he's with us, the Holy Spirit is behind us. Jesus offers us abundant life. So in closing this morning, if you have to decide, decide that you want more. If you're thirsty, look for the more. There's so much that God has to offer us if we just come to him with that hunger and that thirst. Even a little bit. Bring a little closer in our lives. It's making that decision that we do want more. More out of our faith. More out of that relationship. And maybe just a little more. That spirit of us. That spirit that we share. The spirit we want to have there all the time on display. So, if you want more, you want to be closer, ask him for more this morning. God, I can be a little closer. That would be great. Help me to learn how to do that. Ask him to give you more of a hunger for things of God. Say, oh, learn more, understand more. Maybe that crazy guy saying, open the Bible and, and look at some, what it says in there today is such a bad idea. To get to know you a little better. Ask him to give you more of a desire to serve him in any capacity that he needs. <coughs> Ask him to open those doors that have been closed so you might have that deeper relationship with him. He's there. He's listening. He's here right now. And it's all there for the asking. Because God does indeed love you. Amen. When we come to God, we come to Him in prayer. And we pray for things happening in our world, happening in our lives, happening around us. For people we know, for folks we may not know. And Father, we lift up all of these things to you this morning. We come to you this morning, Lord, in concern. Concern for those who are ill and going through very tough times right now. People that we know. We also pray for those who don't know that are suffering also. That they'll feel that same comfort. That we can be the same comfort for them too, through prayer. And keep it in all of our hearts. Father, we thank you for the ability to be there for others, to share that peace, to share our lives and be there for somebody at that time they really need it. We thank you for giving us the strength to do these things. Whenever we need that ability, Lord, we know you give it to us right at that exact moment. The ability to be there, to stay away, to be around somebody, to give comfort, to just let them give it. We thank you for these things. We thank you for also giving us what we need. Giving us that refreshing water. Taking care of that hunger we have for you. When we hear the beautiful music, the songs, when we see the smile of somebody we're helping, or when we can imagine that somebody somewhere has a little bit of comfort because we said a prayer. We pray for those, Lord, in the war-torn areas that are going through such a horrible time. To be with them and give other strength to make the right decisions on what to do next with what's happening. We pray for those, Lord, undergoing continuing treatments. Those, Lord, who aren't feeling the best, struggling through tough times. 
We pray for the ones, Lord, whose prayers are known only to you. The ones who suffer in silence. And the ones who have no voice that we will be a voice for them. Lord, thank you for lifting these, being able to lift these things up to you at any time. Even those little simple prayers. Thank you, God. We appreciate it. Lord, thank you for the beautiful day. We know we can come to you in so many different ways. We don't have to be on our knees for hours. We can just talk to you, be with you, and have you with us at any time. And Lord, we thank you for the beauty of this day. This time together, the time to be able to pray for others and lift them up and know that we can make a difference somehow in the life of somebody who's struggling in any way, shape, or form. We thank you for that. We thank you for the beauty that surrounds us, for the abilities we have. And Lord, we thank you that you're always listening for us, that we now will take a moment to lift up to you directly from our hearts the prayers and thoughts that are in our hearts and out of our minds. Father, we lift up these prayers directly from our hearts, along with all the prayers of all those around us. We lift them up to you, along with the words now that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our belief in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting are things we look to God to each and every day. May we bring Him in closer in those beliefs and in all the beliefs we have in our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us today and every day of our lives. Amen. Thank you.